Hi there, in this video we're going to be taking a quick look at the new um, features in TS GUI 0.9.6.5 and above uh, for creating task sequence variables um, without having anything um, set in the GUI itself. Um, so if we go into our config examples folder, there's this new config no UI um, example file. And you can see up here, the config is exactly the same. But down the bottom here, there's this new no UI section. Now everything that gets set under here uh, will create, um, will give you the option to create task sequence variables um, independent of what's going on in the UI potentially. Um, but they are also group aware. So you can hook up your um, your new task sequence variable options um, to stuff that's going on inside the UI itself. Um, this could be useful if, for example, you wanted to create a whole create a whole bunch of task sequence variables um, based solely on, say, one drop down list for setting a region or a country or a department or whatever that happens to be. So let's. Um, jump in and take a quick look. Now the first thing um, that you'll probably notice here is that it looks like there's a whole bunch of different ways to set this thing up. Um, so you've got no option UI, which is effectively the same as a GUI option, but rather than a GUI option, it's a no UI option. Um, and then we have a variable attribute here. And also if we have a look down here, there's also a variable element. Um, now, effectively, these are exactly the same thing. Um, where in the GUI option, you had the variable element. It's the same thing down here. Um, the reason I've also allowed you to set this as an attribute is just so that you can set the whole thing in one line and not basically bloat out your XML um, unnecessarily. So if, you, if, if all you want to do is create a specific task sequence variable with a specific value, you can just set this in one line um, as it is here. Set your variable, set your value, and you're done. Um, now if you want to do something a bit more advanced, um, like the option below that, uh, where you want to set a query, then obviously you're going to have to break that out um, into um, an element and it's you using the set value um, element rather than say if you're using um, a free text field where you'd be setting the default value and this one you're just setting set value and that can either be a query um, or you can set you know a specific value if you want to as well as in this example below now as far as the queries go these are exactly the same as the one set in free text options um, so if you know if you haven't used those before uh, reference one of the previous videos that runs through that um, but you can do your you know w my query pull back the particular property do some truncation on it calculations on it whatever you need to do um, and then set that into your um, task sequence variable as you would any other um, option previously um, Again, single line, and if you want to break the whole thing out, you can. So there's the variable, set value, value. Now the other thing to be aware of, um, as I said before, these are group aware. Um, so if you want to, you can, you know, take the group, and say so you could set it here if you wanted to, and just that particular option will be affected by that particular group. Um, Again, the purge and active um, attributes, I'm sorry, um, yeah, attribute applies as it normally does. Um, and basically it, it functions in, a, in exactly the same way as uh, groups and toggles work with GUI options. Um, the main thing obviously you'll notice is because there's no um, pages and columns and rows and all that kind of thing, is that there is now this container element. So a container is the equivalent of a page or a row um, or a column. Um, and um, if you were using the, the GUI, um, this allows you to do things uh, like 
basically set inheritance and have a group membership apply to everything within that container. Um, so rather than having to set a group membership on every single option, you can just set it at the container level um, and you're done. And of course you can create, um, you know, containers can be set within containers as well in much the same way that a column is the child element of the row and the row is the child element of the page. Um, you can also set a, one container within another container um, and build a similar structure as you would um, you know, within the GUI. Um, other than that, it's basically the same. Um, so let's whip up a test, a quick test config, um, just so you can see an example of what you might want to do. Um, so let's um, go into our groups and toggles example. And let's grab ourselves a drop down list. And we will replace our checkbox. And let's leave it like that. So, if we're doing a bunch of, um, say, if we wanted to create, um, say, three task sequence variables depending on the department. Um, so let's clean out this one here and get rid of that comment stuff just to keep things nice and tidy. Um, so now we've got three different groups for our three different departments and we'll just leave that as it is. Um, now let's say all we wanted to do, say we had um, a task sequence variable that oh no, installed an application. Let's just keep it really nice and simple. So let's say our three applications were app underscore um, Visio, app underscore project, um, and app underscore access. And let's start with the IT department and say if you had IT, you got all three for some reason. So the first thing we want to do, we've set up our three options and this is how we want um, our basic thing to be set if our value, um, sorry, if our group IT is set. So we've got our container, that everything in that container is a member of group IT and if you're a member of those three, that, that group, you get Visio, Project and Access, those variables are all set to true and we want our purge and active to also be set to true on that container. So let's do this twice more. Once for group HR and one for group PMO. Now say in HR, didn't need Visio. They do want project and they do want access. And in PMO, they don't care about anything but project. So basically, if in this drop down list we select IT, we'll end up, we should end up with that Visio app project and app access, all with a value of true. Uh, if we select the human resources one, we should get Visio is false, project and access is true. And if we're in project office, you get Visio false, project true, access false. That's how it should end up. And because we're setting the purge inactive to be true, only one of these sets should get created, i.e. there should only be one app Visio variable created, or the other two should get chucked out.
So let's see if I've done my job right. tsgui-config config examples slash config no ui.xml and I'm probably going to need to put the full path into that. Config no UI XML. Yes. So here's our drop down list. Let's select IT. And see, we've got our three task sequence variables app Visio, app project, and app access, and they're all set to true. As we would expect from our config. So now let's try HR. And we get false true true. Which is what we expect. And if we select project office, we get false true false. As we expect. So that's basically it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's really no different from what you've been doing with your existing um, TSGUI configs. Um, but you may find it useful for specific scenarios um, where you would be limited um, by having to create all sorts of weird and wonderful um, things in your GUI. Where all, if you, all you want to do is create a half dozen task sequence variables based on one input. Um, so that's it. Uh, if you have any feedback, queries or issues, please get in touch uh, via the 20row.com website. Thanks very much.